Yo, what's good everyone? Chapter 1037 just dropped and it was an absolute banger. Absolutely enjoyed it and I just really want to get into it right now. The One Piece drought has felt pretty long, I'm not gonna lie, and having such a fun chapter to come back to was really, really exciting. So we got not only some really great action, but some literally insane reveals. Like, oh my god, the end of this chapter was uh, pretty sick. So very, very exciting stuff. So, if you enjoyed the chapter, love to know what you think below, and let's get right into it. So, most of this chapter is genuinely really, really fun action with Luffy and Kaido. We get a bunch of great stuff, like Kaido acknowledging that Luffy is on the level that he wants him to be on, like, which I think alludes to the How High Will Your Ceiling Go panel with Roger, Whitebeard, Rox, Odin, and Shanks and saying is luffy gonna be this level and kaido's all in now he's like oh you're you're that guy you know you're that guy pal and just seeing kaido be so like elated to actually be fighting luffy is really fun and i really enjoy it and i think this is so strongly shown by oda because kaido is now just getting drunk he's like yo this is awesome do you want some like when he was like yo you want a swig I was, I was genuinely laughing. It was like, oh my god, Kaido is just like having a fun time, you know what I mean? And the action between them was really interesting, not just because it was a great showing of Luffy and Kaido being relatively on that same level, which is fire, but Kaido getting drunk and going through the phases of drunkenness or kind of the stereotypical, oh, sometimes you're an angry drunk, sometimes you're a sad drunk. Seeing Kaido go through all of them was really funny. Plus, seeing that the attacks that Kaido has used throughout the arc, like the Dragon Twister, the Thunder Bagua, have been altered very strongly from the different phases of alcoholism, I thought it was really pretty cool. This fight was really sick. And I am assuming that Kaido is gonna still fight like sober for the rest of it, but this was just a fun, cool gimmick. Now, I don't know, again, if he does continue this drunken fighting style, that'd be pretty cool. Maybe Kaido will go into a more stereotypical, actual sort of, not fist, because he never fights with his fist, but like a drunken fighting style, kind of like Chu versus Yusuke from Yu Yu Show, where Kaido's a lot more limber, a lot faster, and something more unpredictable than what he has been so far, which definitely Kaido has been unpredictable going through all these emotional changes, but Maybe his fighting style will change very strongly instead of just being variations of other attacks. I think my two favorite moments from the Luffy and Kaido scuffle this chapter was Luffy's headbutt with Kaido, which is obviously really similar to his headbutt with Ulti, which was one of my favorite kind of early action moments for Luffy in Onigashima. So seeing it have a parallel right now with a much scarier opponent is sick i really really enjoyed that luffy actually has a bit more parallels with him kicking kaido looking really similar to the way sanji kicked queen at the end of their fight and personally my favorite little section of this fight was luffy doing a rock yatling which is something that i assume would happen ever since he did the red rock on kaido on chapter a thousand so seeing him do that while kaido is sort of deflecting them all back with his club was really really cool i liked it a lot and from the background it looked like you know ton of conquerors hockey attacks were going into it lightning everywhere it just looked really cool and honestly it looked really detailed too like the amount of like fists that are flying at the same time with kind of deflecting them i feel like this is going to look crazy in the anime like this specific episode because it's just there's so much action it's just it's sick and the coloring specifically for this little panel looks awesome. I love the use of green in the background to contrast with the red from the Conqueror's Hockey. Looks really cool. So those are my favorite moments from the fight. And honestly, there's not that much besides the fight. We cut back to the flower capital and we're seeing a bunch of people say, oh, the festival's almost over. What a shame. We're gonna have to go back to our normal lives, which obviously is more symbolic than that it's saying oh onigashima's almost there we're all gonna die but 
Oda's not literally saying that. And seeing that they're writing their wishes on the lanterns and they'll be sent off into the sky, but seeing some of them are just sad. Like, I want to see mom again. I want to feed my kids tomorrow. I was like, this is crazy. Like, this is really sad stuff. And this is just the beginning. And these moments, Oda does these a lot in Wano, where they humanize the characters so much. He did this really well in Dress Rosa as well, where there were a bunch of people running away from the birdcage, you know. The disaster is coming. In Wano, they're unaware, but Dress Rosa, obviously, they're seeing, like, this is the end right now but in Wano it's much more I guess tragic you know what I mean because the people don't know they're dying they're just like our lives are so awful already I wish I could feed my kids tomorrow you know what I mean and seeing them struggling this much now and being unaware of the looming dread that's coming their way it, it's really tragic genuinely and now let's talk about the end because this end is nuts it's really, really crazy. The second that we cut from Luffy and Kaido fighting to go straight to Marie Joie, I was like, oh my god, what is going on? I knew Marie Joie might show up, maybe on the phone, you know, kind of like how Lucci was on the phone. And seeing them just straight up talk about, oh, uh, the reverie, that was really bad, but we don't need to talk about it right now. It was just like, Oda, Oda, you're teasing us again. I can't believe this. And seeing the Gorosei talk about, oh, this war is crazy. It's between Kaido and Big Mom. And it's kind of interesting. It seems like CP0 doesn't know that Kaido and Big Mom are working together. It seems like they don't, which is fascinating. Maybe they just expect her to betray him, which, you know, understandable. But it seems as though the way that CP0 is portraying the news is that Luffy it's just there and Kaido and Big Mom are the ones fighting you know what I mean because they don't expect Luffy as much of a threat as you know Kaido and Big Mom which is understandable but knowing CP and the Straw Hats relations it is a bit uh skeptical of me to think that he is not considered a heavy contender in the war that they're describing and especially so since the Gorosei are literally talking about, oh, we need to capture Nico Robin. It doesn't matter if people die, though, like Big Mom or Kaido dying. We could just erase them from existence. And it's like, hello? What? <laughs> are they part of the Great Cleansing? I thought the Great Cleansing was going to be with Vivi or Sabo or Hancock or whatever's going on. Vivi seemed like the most likely candidate for this Great Cleansing because literally Emu picked her photo. But. I guess it might be Kaido or Big Mom. That'd be kind of crazy. When I was thinking about this idea of all oh, they need to be erased, I did think of Kaido immediately because Kaido's whole motivation is, oh, well, I want to die a great death. I want to be known forever. I want to live on in the lives of these people forever. And One Piece has always had that thing. When people die, they don't really die. When does a man truly die? When they're forgotten. And Essentially, Rocks, being forgotten by most of the world, should be dead, but he lives on with Kaido. If Kaido were to be erased at this point, this would totally negate his entire dream of being remembered fondly, and it would be a really tragic end to this character who just, even though he's incredibly evil and an awful human being from what we know so far, uh, still oppressor, bad person, but it seems as though if he was erased, this would be like the worst ending possible for this guy. So I thought that was very, very fascinating. So then we cut to the Gorosei talking to a bunch of world government ships heading to Wano. And we see um, they're talking about a fruit in particular, which they don't really mention what it is, but a fruit. And it's really fascinating because it seems like this fruit could allude to many things. Luffy mostly Luffy or some the big reveal of this chapter is that Zunisha is at Wano which is insane this is really cool so it seems like not just Nekomamashi Inuarashi and their little clique they got the musketeers and the I forget what Nekomamashi's group is called not gonna lie 
but them as well. They're there, you know. But it seems as though that Zunisha and all the minks are there, and it's just like, oh, okay. So the entire race of the minks, mostly, is here. And it's just like, that's a lot of reinforcements. But obviously, the biggest one, Zunisha, is here. And Zunisha most likely is just going to destroy the world government ships immediately. And seeing that Momo is most likely around Zunisha, flying around trying to protect Onigashima from falling, we might get some interaction between them next chapter. Not entirely sure. We could probably cut to see what everyone else is up to. But we haven't seen Momo in like... A while I feel but again that could be like the drought kind of getting to my head like we haven't seen Momo in a long time but you know really we have so Zunisha being here is just this is a plot point I definitely did not see coming I felt like Zunisha would have been important in like the final war or something but it does make sense that we got Zoe and then Whole Cake and then Wano and Zunisha's you know coming back around it does make sense. I just expected it uh, in the final war or something. So this is a bit uh, intense. <laughs> you know what I mean? But very, very exciting stuff. I think that this is a lot of potential for the story. Maybe we're going to learn about whatever fruit is related to Zunisha. Maybe we're going to learn about anything related to Zunisha's punishment. Especially since the world government seems to not even know that either. Or anything related to the fruit itself which again could be related to Zunisha but it seems like the Gorosei aren't as all-knowing as a lot of people assume they were which I think is pretty cool and humanizes them quite a bit and yeah that's really it for me I really enjoy this chapter awesome Luffy versus Kaido action with a fun gimmick and really cool paneling this crazy one-two reveal of we're seeing Marie Joie and the Gorosei and then Zunisha's at Wano. Super sick. Really enjoyed this chapter. Super fun read. And yeah, I don't really have much else to say. So if you enjoyed this chapter, let me know down below. As always, if you enjoy this type of content and want to support you guy, like, comment, subscribe, YouTube spiel, you know how it is. And that's been it for me. As always, if you enjoyed the video, I'm glad. And have a good one.